So now we're going to look at the power digit sum challenge. So what this is, is it says that 2 to the power of 15 is 3, 2, 7, 6, 8. And the sum of the digits, which is 3 plus 2 plus 7 plus 6 plus 8, is equal to 26. So what we need to do is find the sum of uh, the number 2 to the power of any given exponent. And this exponent can go up to 1000 right here. And the problem, this might seem like a trivial challenge, but I'll show you why it's a bit more complicated in a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just um, create the function that we're going to be implementing. And this is just called power digit sum. And it takes in an exponent right here. And to test this out, we're just going to test this out with 128 like this to start off with. Okay, so the problem with um, this challenge, why it's not very easy, is you would think that you can just do 2 to the power of 1000. But 2 to the power of 1000 is actually a very difficult calculation, and it's actually a really, really big number uh, that uh, the normal computer can't really process. So I'll show you what happens if you try to do it. So if we try to do console.log uh, 2 to the power of 1000, uh, yeah, that looks right. Um, and then if I do node demo, we can see that it comes up like this in this weird format. And um, you can't really figure out what the number is right here, because if you wanted to write it out properly, again, you'd have to write out the full number and it would become quite difficult. So what we're essentially instead going to do is create a form of column multiplication. And I'll just go through a quick trace of column multiplication just so you know what it's like. So, for example, if we were doing 2 to the power of 4, we'd start off with 2. And then 2 to the power of 4 means we just times it by 2 4 times. So if we do times 2, we'll do 2 times 2, which is 4, like this. Then we'll carry over the 4, times it by 2 again, which becomes 8, like this. We'll carry over the 8, times it by 2 again, which becomes 16. So we'll write in 6 here and then carry over 1 onto this side and then put the 1 here. Then we'll take 16 over and multiply it by 2, and that gives us 32. So we'll write 2 here, carry over the 1, and we have uh, 1 times 2 here plus this 1 here, which is 3. So this is essentially what we're going to be doing with JavaScript. And instead of storing a really large number, um, what we're going to have is we're going to have an array of numbers that will represent this uh, sum part right here, this result part. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a variable. So we'll say let sum equal zero. And then I'm going to have an array called digits. And it's just going to be an empty array. And I'm also going to set the uh, first element to one. And you will see why this works in a bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is have a variable i. And this i just basically goes through the number of times that we have to multiply by 2. So for example, if the exponent was 4, this i would uh, loop over 4 times. Or in this case, we want to loop exponent number of times. So we'll say for i equals 0, i is less than exponent, uh, i++ plus plus in here like this. And again, this is this whole big square loop right here. That's what this for loop is for. So we'll do times two, times two, times two, times two, like that. So the next thing we're going to have is for each of these uh, multiplications of two, we're going to have a number that tracks whatever our carry is. So we're going to just say let carry is equal to zero, like this. And we're also going to have a count. And the count is basically the number of digits that we need to multiply for each calculation. So the maximum number of digits that we'll need to modify for each calculation is basically the number of digits that we've already filled in um, plus one. So for example, if we were on the uh, fourth, if we were on this iteration, for example, uh, we have one digit filled in over here already, which is an 8. And then we need to do a maximum of uh, carry over to this one right here. So it'll be maximum of two times right here. So it's basically just the number of digits that we've already filled in plus one. Again, this will all become clearer um, once I start running through the algorithm. So 
it's it'll be digits plus length plus one. Then we're gonna have another for loop, and uh, I'm just gonna create J here, and J is gonna go from zero uh, all the way to count. And it's going to increase each time. And J will basically be the, uh, this loop, or these loops right here. So it'll be this one, this one, like that. So again, this is the outer loop, I, which does this, 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 this. This will be the inner loop, J, which does this and this, or this and this, or this, or this. It's basically updating each digit for each separate multiplication. And what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to say let current digit equals a digit j or zero. Um, nope, this one right here. So current digit is basically whatever goes up here. So what we want to do here is uh, for example, if we were starting j at 0 and we were doing this multiplication, we want the current digit right here to be 4 or uh, digit 0, which is this one right here. And if it doesn't exist already, we just want to make that a 0. That's what this part does right here. Then what we can say is uh, we can multiply this by 2. So we can say current digit um, equals current digit times 2 plus carry. So what this does basically is this part right here. So whatever was in our current digit would multiply by two. And if there's a carry, we'd add that carry on like this. So basically calculate this part right here. So again, this is the current digit to start off with. We'll multiply it by two and then add the carry right here to figure out this result one right here. Then we want to say if the current digit, so the result of that calculation is greater than 9. Remember that this is an array with single numbers, so each of these can just go up to a maximum of 9. If we want to do that, what we can do in here is say current digit equals current digit take away 10 like this. So for example, if the result of our calculation right here like this was 16, what this would say is it will say current digit instead of being 16 in this box right here, it would say 16 take away 10, which is 6. And what we also need to do now is say set the carry to 1. So carry is equal to 1 because we want the carry right here to be equal to 1. Otherwise, what we want to do is set the carry to 0 because we might already have carry from the previous calculation, so we want to set that to 0. And finally, what we just want to do is say digits j is equal to current digit. So again, I'll just walk through a... Um, this part right here again it's a bit it's a little bit complex to follow so we'll have current digit I'll walk through this part right here so we'll have current digit which is 8 or digits j so j starts off with 0 so we have 8 and then we do uh, current digit equals current digit times 2 plus carry so the carry here is 0 so we'll say 8 times 2 plus 0 that's equal to 16 right here then if current digit is greater than 10, current digit is current digit take away 10. So the 16 becomes a 6. And we set the carry to be 1. So carry is now 1. And uh, what and then otherwise carry 0. And then what we'll say is digits j, which remember was this one right here, is we'll set that to the current digit. So we put 6 into here. Then in the next round, so j is now equal to 1. And remember j is less than count. So digits or length was uh, one here so j now goes up to two and um so we have um current digit is digits j which is digits one or zero and right now digits j doesn't exist so we'll have that set to zero and what we want to do is multiply that by two so zero times two is zero plus carries which is one then we'll get that one and it's not greater than nine so we can set carry to zero again and then we can say digits j is equal to current digit um again if you don't understand it just i would just just read through the code again and look at this trace and understand what's happening so after the all of this has been carried out so again we'll multiply by exponent number of times and we'll update each digit for each multiplication once we have all of that, uh, our digits array will be filled with this with the result of our calculation right here. And 
what we essentially want to do now is just to go through and sum each digit. So what we can say is say digits dot for each. And then for each digit, what we want to do is we want to say sum equals sum multiplied by digit like this. And finally, at the bottom here, we want to just return sum. Again, uh, I know it's very complex. Um, just read through the code and you will understand it. Um, so let's try this out now. So for 128, the result should be 166. So if I run that, hmm. Oh, my bad. It's supposed to be sum plus digit, not sum times digits. There we go. So we got 166 right here. And then the final one that we need to check is for 1000. It should be 1366. So if I put 1000 into here, Yep, we can see that we get 1366 right here. So that is our completed function right there. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that into here. So again, to summarize what it does is it goes through multiplying by exponent number of times. It has a digits array which keeps track of this result right here. We have a carry which keeps track of the carry. And what we essentially do is multiply by 2, add the carry, if it's greater than 9, we'll take away 10 and then put the carry as 1. So it'll be used in the next calculation. So if we run all the tests now, um, hang on. Oh, my bad. That should be like that. There we go. We can see that it passes and we can go ahead and submit that.